Hi there, my name is Steve Gearhart and this is the Unagi Observer. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching this new series of videos uh, called Where to Eat for Otakon 2022. For those of you who don't know what this series of videos are, I do this every year that Otakon is up and running. Um, of course, during pandemic and lockdown when they shut down, I didn't do them, but otherwise I do them even if I don't go. But it looks like I am going to go this year, so yay! Um, <laughs> anyway, so the purpose of the these videos is very simple. Um, I talk about various things like security, uh, transportation, how to move around the city um, to get to the convention, um, uh, where and you know what it's like inside the convention, convention tips, um, and of course at the end we talk about where you can get food if you don't want to get food inside of the convention center and how to deal with that, where to find convenience stores, ATMs, um, coffee. I know some of you need the coffee, so you know that's going to be part of it. So that's what these videos are all about. So we're going to start off with one that I always that I've been starting off leading off the series with um, over the past I'd say about three or four times I've done this, and that is going to talk about safety and security at the convention. Um, this one is for the parents. Part of this is for the parents, but all of you should watch this. And then um, if I have time, we'll start talking about a little couple of other things. Uh, but, but it's safe and secure. That's what we're going to start on. So let's start. Hi there. So I'm going to talk briefly on a subject that is uh, kind of difficult. And originally I wasn't going to even mention it uh, simply because it's, it's something that has no solution. And I don't have a solution to give you or a path to give you to help prevent, keep you safe from this one particular crime, which is mass shootings. The only reason why I'm bringing it up is because of the one that happened on the 4th of July outside of Chicago. Um, so this is really for <clears throat> the parents who are concerned about these things, this kind of thing. And unfortunately, all I have, all I can give you is to use your best judgment. You know, if you have kids and you send them off to school, you know, you have that concern, right? Apply that concern to sending your kids to Otakon. It's it's kind of the same thing in that vein, in that your your kids are going to a place where you're not going to be, maybe, and um, so you're going to rely on their good judgment and the safety of the officers and people that would try to keep them safe. So that's that's the best I can do for you because this is a crime. Unfortunately, mass shootings are a crime that can happen anywhere at any time for any reason or no reason. There's just nothing for us to do to protect ourselves from that happening, unlike, say, muggings, purse snatchings, and getting your cell phone stolen, which I'll actually address in the video later on. So you have a choice. You can either live in fear and stay in your home and never leave it, or you we accept the, the situation as it is and we do the best that we can with it. So those are the two choices you have, and those are the two choices that you have for your kids. So. Personally, I'm going to say that I think it will be okay for you to send your kid to Otakon. And the reason why I say that is because I can say with certainty that DC has a larger um, law enforcement presence than a lot of other cities within the United States for the very reason that it is the capital of the United States and we have a lot of people that need to be protected that are part of government here. So there's a lot of task forces from multiple law enforcement agencies, agencies, both local and federal, that work to that end. So while I can't say that a mass shooting would never happen in D.C., I can say with, with relative certainty that there are many, many groups working to mitigate that so that the threat from that, that this would be this big, right, is now down to something very much smaller. So take comfort in that. Uh, the second thing that I, that I want to talk about a little bit is, um, and again, I kind of touch on this later on, but I'm, I'm going to be more forceful about it now um, before we go on for the rest of the video. And that is, is that some of you might feel that having a firearm, an actual firearm on you is going to make you safer. I am not here to invoke a second amendment debate in the comments section of this video. Okay, so if you start to do that, I'm going to block you. And if it's pervasive, then I'm just going to shut down the, um, the comments section. This is not what this is about. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen if you bring a firearm to Otakon. Okay, 
<clears throat> yes, you have the right to have a firearm on you when you're in Washington, D.C. You can walk around, but that does not give you the right to enter buildings or places or events where they say no firearms are allowed. You will be stopped at the door. They take this very, very seriously. It's not just Otakon, it's anywhere in D.C., honestly, that says no firearms permitted. Otakon has a no firearms permitted policy. The convention center also has that same policy. So if you show up with a firearm, even if you're, you know, up front just saying, hey, look, I have a whatever on my hip, you know, holster, what, whatever, they're going to say to you, you can't come in. You have to do whatever you want to do with your firearm out, outside of Otakon. You know, if you want to put it in a hotel safe, whatever, however you want to do it, and then come back, they'll let you in. But you're not going to get in there with your firearm. And if you press the issue, the police will be called and you will be interrogated. Not necessarily there, but at a police station. Not how you want to spend your time at Oregon, right? Again, this has nothing to do with the Second Amendment debate. I'm just conveying to you what's going to happen should you try to bring a firearm into Oregon, okay? So in other words, what am I saying to you? Don't do it. Just don't bother, okay? Because you're not going to get in. And if you do sneak in, with a firearm you're able to get that somehow that happens and you get caught it's not going to be as simple you're out of otakon you're thrown out and you're going to be you know um, banned for life you're gonna get arrested okay hands down that's gonna be that that's gonna happen and again I'm not trying to be political here. I'm just conveying to you what's going to happen. However you feel about this issue, that's how you feel. These are the policies. These are the actions that will happen if you try to bring a firearm into Otakon. Okay, enough said on this scary subject. Let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, so before we start talking about actual security and safety concerns and things in detail, let me tell you a little bit about... Uh, Washington DC itself. It is not a big city. Um, there are bigger cities. Um, the population, I'm going to read some stats here. Um, for Washington DC, it has about 690,000 people in it as of the, I think the 2020 census. It's about 68 um, square miles. Uh, to give you an idea, Baltimore is 92 square miles. Um, I'm not exactly sure how many people live here. It's less than that. I think it's about 665,000 people. But physically speaking here in Baltimore, we're, we're a larger city. So what does that mean? Um, well, because this is more of a medium-sized city than, say, New York or L.A., um, things are a little bit more compact. Um, D.C. also has a better transit, public transit system um, than Baltimore does, certainly. Um, it has the metro system, which is the subway system, that gets you everywhere in D.C. very quickly. Um, there are various major li lines of it, and I'll talk about that more in a, in a future episode. But metro is basically how people get around inside the city. There are two uh, bus systems. One is, of course, the regular paid system. Another one is a limited route free. Uh, you can just hop on in there color-coded, um, yellow, orange, blue, that kind of thing. Um... But what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that you can access the city, parts of the city, fairly quickly. Um, last time I was at Otakon in 2017, I was actually staying in the in an Airbnb in the Franklin neighborhood, which if I had to walk would have taken me 40 minutes. But instead, I had a nice 10-minute walk along nice a nice street that had cafes to get to the Blue Line, which took me straight two stops. To the convention center so my total trip was like maybe 15 minutes maybe depending upon how slowly i wanted to walk if i wanted a cup of coffee so that kind of gives you an idea of how what, what what that is um so that means that the neighborhoods are a little bit more compact but they have interesting boundaries um dennis leary used to have this joke called good block bad block poodle block uh, for a time in the 80s, uh, for some reason, people who owned poodles um, 
weren't watching their poodles, and the poodles would be like 50 stories up, and they'd crash through the screen or the window and fall to their death onto somebody else killing them as well. So they would call it the poodle block. So, in, and also in New York, you could go to a block that was just a nice block, and then the next block could be a bad block. Not that extreme in D.C., but what it is is that the boundaries between most of the neighborhoods and definitely between the quadrants, I'll explain that later, um, you'll have pockets of bad areas, and they exist. And so one of the things that you, that, that like if you're in a nice neighborhood, like the Franklin neighborhood, which I was in, inside the neighborhood everything was relatively safe you know it's a city so you have to be careful but relatively safe but once i walked out of the neighborhood and you know kind of like literally across the street it was like okay why do i feel like i'm a little bit in danger and i'm in a place i probably shouldn't be so that happens i'm not saying that you're going into gangland central and you have to worry about getting shot no but you're going to see things. You're going to see drug deals happen. Things are not going to be clean. Um, you know, people are not going to be as friendly. Not that D.C. is a friendly town, and I'll get into that in a moment. Um, so, you know, you just kind of have to be aware that while you might be in a nice location, the moment that you cross over a block in one direction or another, you could be going through a not-so-great area. Um, <clears throat> that is definitely true of the convention center area. If you go more than a block uh, north, east, or west, if you go for about a block, maybe a block and a half, you'll be fine. Once you get outside of that, it gets iffy. Not that you should be going that far, but just so you know, in case you're at a hotel and you might have to walk through some of these areas. So just be cognizant of that. Um, D.C., like I said, is not the most friendliest of cities. Um, so I grew up in the D.C. metro area. I've worked in D.C. I've lived for a very short time in D.C. People are not nice. In DC. Now it's not like New York where people scream in your face, but it's more along the lines of, you know, you definitely have to pay attention to where you're walking. And if you're a slow walker, please, for the love of God, stay to the right because they will bump past you. It's not to pick a fight with you, but you're just in the way and they will just bump into you and keep on going. Um, uh, going from behind you or, or in front of you. So just make sure that if you're a slow mover, like I am, Stay to the right. You can't go wrong by staying to the right. People, that's kind of the unspoken rule, so to speak. It's like it's like the escalator rule. If you're not going to walk or if you're going to walk really slowly, stay on the right side of it so that the people who are going to go way up quickly on the escalator, that they can. So that's kind of the rule. Um, it's not that people in D.C. don't have empathy for you if something bad happens to you. It's just that they don't have a whole lot of empathy for you if something bad happens to you. Like if you were to step off the curb and get hit by a car and your leg's broken, they're going to help you, right? They're going to help you. But I'm telling you because I've actually had people tell me this. Oh, I had to help someone the other day and they fell down and, they, and I think they broke their arm. I'm not sure I helped them out, but Jesus, they made me late for work. That's the mindset. Um, everyone in D.C. kind of thinks they're important, and so they act that way. So just be aware of that. Um, now, obviously, in restaurants and things like that, you'll get good service. You know, you know, you'll, those are those things will happen. But on the day to day, people who live and work there, they're just not very nice people. So just be aware of that. Um, you know. It's a tourist town, it's a convention town. When you go up to somebody who's clearly a native and you ask for directions, don't be surprised or put off if they just kind of go, yeah, okay. You want to go, you know, like as if you're a bother to them because you are a bother to them. <laughs> that's, that's just how DC is. Um, not the best place to live. I don't recommend it. <laughs> um, unless you think you're important, then you're, you'll just fit in just fine. So anyway, just some things to keep uh, in mind about about DC, um, just as you navigate, as you go to your hotel, as you go to the back and forth to the convention center, just those little things, little little tips, just 
just keep those things in mind. Okay, so let's go on and talk about the next subject. So the, for this part, I'm going to talk about the actual crime in Washington, D.C. Um, Washington, D.C. is like any other city. It has gangs. It has drug problems. There are places in the city you don't want to be, um, usually southeast, parts of, parts of northeast, a little bit of southwest. Again, I'll explain the quadrant system later. Um, because of where we're going to be in the city, which is at the convention center, which is near downtown, which is near the mall, we are probably going to be very well protected between the federal agencies, the Marines at 8th and I, and the Capitol Police, and the regular DCPD. Um, it's a tourist town. DC is a tourist town. Uh, we have embassies. We have people from outside the country coming here. So there is a police presence at where we're going to be. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about gangbangers coming in. The odds of that happening and having a shooting about where we're at, where we're going to be in terms of gangland shooting, um, very small. You don't need to really, really worry about that. You might see a drug deal go down. You might see see some chain, some money in, in a baggie being exchanged. You might see that. But if that's all you get, then that's, you know, whatever. Um, so in terms of that, you we're not going to have to really worry about that. That's not something that, that should be a worry. Uh, parents, if you're worried about your kids, on in, in terms of that, don't. Um, and again, we're in D.C., probably one of the most protected, in terms of crime, protected places. I'll talk about riots and, and protests later. Uh, that's a different animal. Um, the In order to get hurt that way, you have to travel to a different part of the city to have the odds increased of you getting hurt or killed due to drugs or gangbangers, okay? So, since we're all going to be at the convention center and we're not going to be going to Anacostia or Southeast or whatever, it's kind of a non-issue. So, parents, don't need to worry about that. Okay, so here's what we do need to worry about. What we need to worry about are what I call low-grade muggings and uh, person cell phone snatching. Um, so what is a low-grade mugging? A low-grade mugging is when you, when someone comes up to you, you're by yourself in a relatively quiet place and they come up to you and they're making sure no one else is around to help you and they intimidate you. They don't pull out a knife, they don't pull out a gun, they threaten you with it and usually their hands are out, out of their pockets and they're just, you know, they're gesturing and they're just basically trying to intimidate you to give you, to give them your money. Should that happen to you, give them the money. Your life isn't worth it. Your friend's life isn't worth it. Just give them the money, all right? They'll go on their way, do the police report, so forth and so on. Just should that happen to you, Give them the money. Don't be a hero. So, but you can avoid that. How do you avoid that? Well, you know, it's very interesting. I'm glad you asked. Um, <laughs> um, the police in various cities, D.C. and Baltimore being among them, interviewed um, muggers that they've arrested. And they said, you know, why do you do what you do? How do you do it? You know, your methodology, et cetera, so forth and so on. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I'm just going to give you the highlights. And the highlights are basically this. Um... Muggings are, are opportunistic crimes, meaning that they have to wait for the opportunity to happen. It's not like they plan it and they, you know, the, you know, the elaborate planning. It's, it's almost at the spur of the moment. And they target, the way that they target people is they target people who are not paying attention to the world going on around them. If you're the type of person like me who has a camera and you're walking around and you're taking pictures of things, you're looking at people, you're looking at things, you're taking pictures, they're not going to mug you. Even though you have a nice camera in your hand, they're not going to mug you because, or the odds of them mugging you are, are, are very small because you're paying attention to what's going on around you. They feel that you have a good chance of spotting them before they're able to do the thing that they want to do to you. If you're simply just walking down the street and you're looking at people as you walk, you know, you're, you're kind of moving your head around, maybe you're looking across the street or you're looking at a sign or, or something like that, but your, your focus always comes back to what's, in, you know, what's going on around you, muggers don't like that. So they, they leave, they're going to leave you alone. 
if you're on your cell phone and you're FaceTiming as you're walking, you're going to get mugged. If you're not paying attention, you're going to get mugged. If you're by yourself, you're going to get mugged. Not you're going to get mugged, but the odds of you getting mugged are going to get higher. How do you do avoid that? Travel with another person or travel in a larger group, three or more. They're not going to, if you do that, then the odds of anything bad happening to you in terms of mugging goes from this to almost like this. Like they're, they're just not going to, there's too many people. So if you're walking from the convention center, say it's a block, and by the way, DC city blocks are huge. Um, so if you're walking, like say a block or so from the, from your, from your hotel to the convention center, right? Or you're walking to the metro station that you need to take to get to the to the convention center, and you walk you walk with someone, walk with a group of people, go with a group of people. That's your protection, and that's actually your best best way to be protected. So there's that. So now the next part: purse snatching and cell phone snatching. Um, again, these are crimes of opportunity. If you're not paying attention, or if you're wearing your purse in a certain way, then they'll come up, grab it, and just run. Like, like you're not gonna, you're not gonna catch up to them. All right, these these guys are like, I, I don't know where they get the energy, but I've seen it happen where they grab a person, they're boom gone, like in a blink. Um, so what they're looking for basically is if you're holding your purse in your hand, right? They can rip it right out of your hand. If you're not paying attention, they come up from behind you. They can just swipe it right out of your hand and go. You put it on on a table. They'll just take it right off the table and go. If you have a strap on your purse and you just hold it on your shoulder, they'll rip it right off your shoulder and go. Um, they will push you down. They'll grab it, and if you put up a fight, they will push you down, and then they will run. Um, so what's the best way you can do that? Again, carry things in such a way that it's not easily accessible. If you have a hand purse but you have a backpack, put it in your backpack. And by the way, if you're wearing a backpack, use both straps over your shoulder so they can't just rip it off you. They're not going to do that. Now, if you, again, wear a backpack with one strap over one shoulder, they're going to rip it off your off your back and run. So, you know, that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do with the strap is to hold, is to put it over your head, over the shoulder, so the strap comes down like this. What that means is that the mugger, or the person at your has to determine whether or not they can easily rip that off of you or not and most of the times they're just not going to bother it's easier just to snatch and grab and run okay so be cognizant of how you travel with your purse with your backpack cell phones this is a big one um this happens a lot uh and the reason why it happens a lot is because we have tourists who are coming from places where this is not a thing um, like even here in Baltimore, while it does happen, it's not as big of a thing as it is in DC. And let's say you take your phone and you just put it, you're eating outside on the bench outside of food that you just ordered and you you set the food down and you're like, Oh, I need to put my phone down. You put it on the corner of, of, of the, of the table and you put your food down. Then you look over and you're, and you look over and your phone is gone. That's how quickly it will happen. Um, it's a moment of turning your head and somebody watching you, targeting you, watching you how, you, how you treat your phone, that you put it down and you don't pay attention to it for a second. They will be brazen enough just to swipe it right then and there. That that's, goes for your laptops, your iPads, whatever electronics that you might want to put on to the table next to you. Don't put it in a place that's safe, that's on your person, in a backpack, that's hard for people to get. By the way, if you have a purse or a backpack and you're sitting at a table that's outside and you're worried about that, you take your bag off, you drape it over your knees so that you're, when your knees are under the table, they actually are going to have to reach under the table to grab at your, at your things, at your belongings, and then still try to get away. They're not going to do that. So kind of put it, drape it over your knee, make sure your knees are underneath the table. It's all about access, access and opportunity. So as long as you do those things, then you should be okay. And again, this is outside of the convention center. And this is actually 
good for any city that you go to. This isn't just D.C. It's not just Baltimore. It's any city in the world that you go to. These are good tips to follow, good security tips for, for yourself. So, But just be aware that it kind of happens more so in D.C. than in, say, Baltimore or uh, Charleston or, or wherever. So there you go. Pay attention. Travel in groups. Make sure that you have your belongings in an inaccessible place. Okay? You should be A-OK -okay if you do those things. Okay, so this next section is a little bit scarier. <clears throat> and this is, we're going to talk about protests and riots. So, um, we're coming off of years of having to deal with these two things, protests and riots. And I'm just going to be blunt. No matter where you go in the United States, you're going to come across these things. Sorry, that's just how it is. That's the nature of our nation right now. Um, D.C. more so than other places. Uh, <clears throat> other places that have experienced riots, it's because something has happened. Washington, D.C. is the capital of our nation, where most of our government is. And because of the way that things are going right now. I actually had done a, a, a version of this video last week and I had to redo it based on the Supreme Court decisions that were just recently made because I'm going to have to talk to you guys about protests and riots now <clears throat> in a more significant fashion. D.C. is always has protests. Always. Always. Every day. Every day. Every day. Here's what that means. Most of these protests are nonviolent. Um, it's a small; they're usually small, depending upon you know what the issue is. But they block streets, they block venues, they block things. They might shut down a, a a metro station might shut down because they're just trying to limit access to the protest, whatever it may be. Most of these protests, the why the overwhelming majority of these protests are actually permitted meaning that the people got the permit to do the thing so this is actually legal um the city set up uh, set aside the space and the time for them to do the thing to do their protest so uh what i would do is go onto the dc website the federal and also with the federal websites and see what protests are going on for, during oticon and the reason why you want to do that is because your hotel may not be near the convention center like you might have to travel a little bit like maybe take a metro and it would be probably a good idea if you had an idea of what streets were blocked, what metro stations are going to be blocked or closed down, so that you can give yourself an alternative mode of transportation of a different path to the convention center. Again, it's, it's they just happen. They just they just do. And again, most of these are recorded. People know about them ahead of time. They're not expected to be violent. They just are inconvenient. <laughs> um, but because of the Supreme Court um, uh, rulings lately, some of these protests are going to be free form and they're just going to be spontaneous and sometimes they just happen. It's a good idea to, on your phone, have a local news app on there so that you can get alerts, so that you know as you're walking to the metro station that you think you need to go to, that you get that alert that says, uh, don't go there, right? Don't go there. Don't be a part of the protest. That's the other thing. If you see a protest happening, don't don't try to walk through it. It just is going to end in tragedy. The police don't know who you are. The people there don't know who you are. They see somebody who might be, you might be cosplaying. That's going to draw attention to you in a protest. They're going to wonder what that means, and they're going to confront you. And that confrontation is going to be scary and intimidating and might end with somebody throwing a punch. Sorry, that's just how it is right now. Um, and it's not just D.C., it's about anywhere you can go. It's just that D.C. has more protests than other places because of what's happening city at the time that Otakon is going to happen during 2022 it will not surprise me that there will be protests um, so 
definitely, definitely get your apps. Look it up every morning before you before you leave your hotel room to see where the protests are, what's going on, are they are they relatively peaceful, are they violent, is it something that just happened and water cannons are being used? You get the idea. Keep yourself informed and stay away from them. Stay away from them. Don't get involved. It might be your fight, but you're here for Otakon. You're not here to fight. Okay? So just keep in that, just keep that in mind. Um the other thing about protests is that unfortunately sometimes protests turn into riots. There is a difference between a protest and what a riot is. A protest is a simple assembly of people, usually peaceful, chanting with signs, maybe they're doing a march, or they're congregating elsewhere somewhere to make their feelings heard and known. A riot is when everything goes wrong. And for whatever reason, it gets violent, there's property damage, uh, people get hurt, sometimes killed. Uh, I have already been through <laughs> a number of riots over the past 10 years. I have had to flee the city one time. I've been in the middle of one, I've not by choice. And I can tell you it's not fun. Don't think about it. If you see a riot happening, just run the other way. Run, just don't think run the other way um will a riot happen while otokan is going on i don't think so but i can't be sure i'm sorry there's nothing there's no surefire way of identifying whether a protest is going to turn into a riot either it does or it doesn't most of the time they don't but if they do, you have to be ready. What happens if a riot happens? Well, at the convention center, if you're at the convention center, the convention center is going to lock down. If you're at a hotel, the hotel is going to lock down. They have protocols for this. That's what they do. They've developed over the years. They've developed protocols to handle these kinds of things. Um, even here in Baltimore, for years, um, believe it or not, a uh, the 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 aquarium is a safety point because it's considered a fortress by by the BP, uh, you know, the Baltimore Police Department. Um, so that's a place where actually some government officials might be placed during a riot because it's secure. Your hotel is going to be pretty secure, believe it or not. Uh, the convention center is basically a fortress, uh, more or less. And and so if a riot should happen. There will be an announcement, and they'll tell you that this that, that it's going to lock down. Stay inside. Don't go looking for your friend. Don't go looking for your family. Stay inside. That's the best thing you can actually do for your friend and do for your family, is to be able to be in a fixed location where they know that you, where you're at, that you can communicate with each other on your cell phones and say, where are you? I'm here, I'm in lockdown. Okay, I know where you are. Where are you? I'm here, I'm in lockdown in that convention center. Okay, I know where you are. That's very, very important. So if the lockdown should happen, stay there. Don't go outside, don't be an idiot. Don't be an idiot. Please don't be an idiot and go outside. One of the problems about being a riot is that nobody knows who you are. Nobody knows what side you're on unless you make it clear. The police don't care who you are or which side you're on. If you're breaking, if they feel that you're breaking the law, you will get arrested. You might get a baton upside the head. You're certainly going to get tear gassed. So stay inside should a riot happen. You are in a safe location. There is security. There is food. There is water. There is electricity. You have the things that you need to ride the riot out stay there that's your best course of action when the all clear is given you'll know you'll be able to hook up with your people to this point this is where i will tell the parents to develop a before your kid goes to otakon if they're old enough to go on their own to develop a communication plan a check-in plan hey four o'clock every day check in with me four o'clock and you know 10 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the evening, or however you want to do it. 
that way you guys are in constant communication you know where people are you know where you are in the world and people if they need to get to you or contact you they can so make sure that you have those communication plans set up um so again this is my concern for Oticon 2022 is that because of the political nature of the nation, political nature of what's going on in Washington, D.C., the rulings that the, the, the Supreme Court has just issued, um, I am certain there's going to be a large number of protests, so make sure that you have an app that will tell you where things are and how to get where you need to be. And how to get to where you need to be. If a protest happens, or a protest turns into a riot, find a place a safe place and stay there and communicate to the people to your people where you are if you're in a convention center if you're in your hotel and they lock down stay inside communicate to your people where you are i wish i could give you a more definitive is it or isn't it i can't you're just gonna have to use your best judgment i know that's scary it's a scary time we live in so unfortunately that's the one thing i'm gonna tell you about about security you're gonna have to be on your own the only thing I can provide you are those tips. So let's hope that it's just protests, okay? So the good news is that when you're inside the convention center, you're going to be pretty safe. Um, so the only thing that you really have to worry about is somebody else stealing your pocky. So, <laughs> it, uh, but in all seriousness, um, you know, pretty much everything that I talked about before is almost doesn't exist, right? Uh, you have well-trained uh, security guards. You may not think so. I can tell you they are. And the reason for that is just because of the nature of the city. It's a tourist town. It's a convention town. It's the, the capital of the United States. So they take security far more seriously than they would in Baltimore. So that's the caveat. <laughs> Your safety comes to, comes to a price. Um, <clears throat> so one of those things that you will probably be as a con goer that you will hate is the bag check. Um, it's a thing. In Washington, D.C., that's a thing. And it's not just stemming from what's happened in recent years. It goes back to 2001, 9-11, 2001. So they take this stuff very, very seriously. There is no way around it. If you come to Otakon with a bag, doesn't matter you're gonna have to go through back check no amount of complaining no amount of arguing no amount of saying this isn't fair no matter how many times you say it online i did uh, why do i have to do this you have to do this it's for your own safety you're gonna have to deal with it suck it up thank god you have a cell phone right to keep you entertained <laughs> okay so follow the rules of you know the the lineup to, to get in um so you're just like i said you're just gonna have to deal with the back check that's just a, a that's a thing unfortunately that's gonna be a thing um you're gonna say well not all conventions do that and i agree with you all not all conventions do that this is washington dc they're gonna bag and check your back if they're still doing that then you can come to expect it and you're just gonna have to suck it up and take it and do it uh, Otakon is known as the, as the convention of lines. This is just one more line that you're going to have to go through. Um, in 2017, when when you know they were down there for the first time, uh, I happened as I was leaving uh, one of the doors, I happened upon one of the security guards who was watching that door, and it was the door that led directly to the escalator that takes you down to the metro. And I, I went up to him and I said, "Hey, what do you think about all these all these people? You know, this is kind of different. It's a convention that that DC is not really used to a style of conventioning." And the, I thought he was going to talk about the cosplay and things like that. And the first thing out of his mouth was, "Why do you people think that you can do whatever the hell you want?" We had a discussion. Basically, what he was talking about was, you know, if you walk out that door, I'm not letting you back in. You have to go back around and go through the proper exits, entrance and exits. You can leave here, but I'm not letting you back in this way. You have to go, why, why do you not understand this, this method of security? And he, he has a point, because in Baltimore, you literally could go through, as long as you have your badge, right? You could literally walk into any door. 
like literally just walk in and just be like, eh, here's my bed, and you're good to go. Security is thought of differently there. So if you're going to the convention center for the first time, be wary of where you, what exit you use. If it's not a main exit, entrance and entrance and exit, then you're not going to be able to get back in. So if it's just like a security guard there, and you start going through the door, and the guy says, "Once you go out that door, you can't come back in that way. You're going to have to go back around." He means it. Okay, you're not going to be able to come back in that way. It's going to lock, and you're not going to be able to come in. And he's not going to open the door. You're going to have to go back around. All right, that's just how it is. It's your safety. That's what that's what it's there for. So just be wary of that. Um, one of the things that I noticed at the and this was 2017, so this is five years ago. So things might have changed since then because I haven't been able to get there. Um, one of the things that I noticed there was that also what security does is keeps you moving. So like when you're at that es escalator to go down into the dealer's room, it has that neat little mezzanine kind of thing where you can kind of look out over things and you have a security person going, no, keep going, no, keep going. That's a security pro uh, a precaution because they don't want people bunching up there because it can cause a problem. So they're going to move you along. Just expect it. Don't argue it. Don't complain because it ain't going to do you any good. So just do it, okay? The upshot, again, is that you're going to be in a very secure location. And again, as I was saying in, in the riot portion of this, if a riot should happen, you're probably in the best place, in one of the best places in the city. It's, it's a fort. It is, it's a fort. It's, it's, that's what it's going to turn into. They're going to bring the barriers down. They're going to bring the barriers up. Yes, there are barriers that come up as well as down. And you should be safe in there. There is food. There is water. There is electricity. You get the idea. So inside, but the thing you're going to have to deal with is DC style security. And that means that you don't have quite the free range of movement that you think you do. And you will be checked. Um, another thing, actually, that I forgot to mention externally outside of the convention center, as well as inside, but more so outside, is that if your cosplay involves a weapon, like if something looks like a sword or a dagger or a, or a mace or a gun, if you can break it down and not carry it around with you in public outside of the convention center, you're not going to get pulled over by the police. When I say pulled over, you could be walking down the street and the police will come out, a squad car will come out, and they'll come out and be like, come here. Um, if you give them lip, you will be taken to the station. Period. End of story. They're going to want to look at your weapon. They're going to determine whether or not it's it's a thing. Because whether or not you think it's a weapon and whether or not the people around you know that's a weapon or not, there are a lot of people in D.C. who are probably going to look out the window and they're going to see you with a huge-ass sword sitting on your shoulder. And they're going to be like, the hell? And they're going to call it in. So be wary of that. Um, when you're inside the convention center and you have something that looks like a firearm, um, and it looks real enough, you're going to be called out on it, okay? Just just so, just be prepared for that, and just be, be prepared to show, and do it nicely, to show, oh no, this is a prop, this is fake, this is paper mache, whatever you have to do, whatever you have to say, to convince them that this is not a real firearm. Because they take that seriously. In D.C., particularly if you're walking along the mall and cosplay and you're carrying what looks something like a long long rifle, oh, you're going to get stopped. <laughs> oh, someone's going to draw down on you. <laughs> that, that, that's a thing. Um, so just be cognizant of your cosplay uh, if it involves weaponry and if you can just stow it in such a fashion that doesn't look suspicious. Please do that. It's it's in, your, it's in your own best interest because the interrogation can take some time. Like they'll 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 <clears throat> they'll ask you to stay there wherever it is that they pull you over or stop you, and they're going to call it in. They're going to research you. And they're going to make sure that you're not some lunatic with a gun. Okay, um, that's just how it is. So, yes, obey the rules. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. So when you're inside Otakon, Otakon has its own set of rules, right? 
okay, that we get, that we see on the website, and we get it in the little book that we get, we get it in the little app, right, Apple app, um, that, you know, for the convention, or wh whatever it's called, and <clears throat> so there are rules of conduct, make sure you understand those rules, you don't have to know them by letter and verse, just understand the gist of it, and follow them, don't be a jerk, okay, understand that the convention has policies that supersedes Oticons, so if the convention center kicks you out, that's it. Oticon can't do anything for you. Maybe appeal your case, I don't know. But, you know, Oticon literally can't do anything. Oticon has to answer to the convention center. So, if they tell you don't bring this thing in, don't bring it in. If they tell you not to act in a certain way, please don't act in a certain way. If they tell you please don't wear an offensive t-shirt, don't wear an offensive t-shirt, please. Uh, there was one guy I remember at the Baltimore Convention Center who um, wore an offensive t-shirt on purpose to see whether or not he would get kicked out from Otakon, and he did, and he made a big fuss out about it, and everyone just looked at him and said, did you read, did you read the, the thing? My First Amendment rights. No, that's not how this works. <laughs> okay, so follow the rules. If you follow the rules, you're going to have a good time. Um, just... I guess what I'm trying to say is don't be a jerk. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's it for that. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up here for a commentary for the parents. Yes, the parents who are trying to figure out, okay, you've told me all this stuff and yeah, I needed to process this information and come up with a game plan if I want to let my kid go to Otakon. Um, if this is the first time that your kid is going to Otakon, if this is the first time you're coming to Otakon, um, let me tell you something nice about Otakon. It's family oriented. Uh, what that means is that the vast majority of the things that go on at Otakon, you and your kid are going to be able to go to it, enjoy it, and not get triggered or offended necessarily. So there's a lot of things that go on and you can pick and choose and they do a pretty good job of identifying what, be, what, would, what might be good for a 15 year old but not for a 5 year old, right? Um, any of the really adulty kind of things are definitely separated out. Oticon does a really good job of doing that, saying, okay, here are the things for the adults, and we're going to put them way over here and make it really hard for those who are not adults to get in. So Oticon does a really good job of those kinds of things. So don't worry about that. Um, if you have a younger person, um, say, you know, under 15 or, you know, 13 or under or tween, whatever, and they want to go to Otakon, and you decide that you want to go with them, you're going to have a good time. Like I said, uh, the programming is such that um, you, you'll be able to pick and choose, and you have plenty of options. Um, and again, you're going to be in a secure environment. You're going to see other parents with their kids, too. You might make some friends. Who knows? That's what conventions are for, right? Like-minded people coming together and you know, maybe make some friends. Um, so it's nice. That's, it's kind of nice that way. As you're looking at your kid and their teens, um, you know, and you say, okay, I, you're allowed to go, and maybe you live in the area so you know they're going to come home at night, right? They're going to come home once the convention is over uh, every night. Then, you know, that's a set of worries you don't, you don't have to worry about. <clears throat> now, if your kid is spending time in a hotel there and you're not with them, there are going to be parties where alcohol is present. You, you know, you're just going to have to have to talk with your kid. And I can tell you again, generally speaking, people are not there to have a party and get drunk and have bad things happen to them. They're there to enjoy anime. So these kinds of parties, while they do happen, you are going to need to inform your kid whatever it is that you want to talk to them about handling those kinds of situations. You know, if, you know, your kid goes to school every day having to deal with this stuff, this is, a, this is really not any different than that. Okay. So whatever you say to your kid as they go off to school or, or spend the night at a friend's house, it's the same thing you're going to say for this. So just keep that in mind. And also, Otakon does not have a reputation for being a party convention. There are conventions out there which are party conventions where they do the thing and then at night everyone goes to the hell and mm, right? So Otakon is not that. So don't worry about that kind of a thing. 
So what am I saying to you? What I'm saying to you is use your best judgment with the information that, you have, that I gave you. Some of this information is, is literally how you would be in any city. Like, you know, the gang stuff, the drugs, the purse snatching, those, those kinds of things. That's something you would do in any city, right? Um, I gave you a little bit of an idea of what DC is like, um, you know, physically and, and, and how people react to people. Um, just keep that in mind. Um, the really scary part, of course, are the protests and riots. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's just no way to predict that other than to keep yourself informed. Um, so use this information to make the decisions that you need to make. I will say overall, I think your kid's going to be safe. Um, you know, I can't guarantee that, right? You know, things happen. But I think generally speaking, overall, your kid's going to be safe. If you, and depending upon the age of your kid, you may want to go with them, and that's good too. Um, actually, that's that you, you might actually have a lot of fun. So, um, even though I talked about some scary stuff, it's you're in a good place, it's in a city that's very well protected. Things happen, but things happen everywhere. So, just make the decisions as you see fit. So that's it for the safety and security of Oticon 2022. Hope this was informative. Um, my intent was not to scare, but to inform. So I hope that that happened. And uh, let's go on to a more pleasant topic.